Welcome back to our channel for videos about aviation history. I always wanted to bring better, more interesting videos so I spent a lot of time watching, reading, and researching. Maybe in the video, the voice is not perfect, but the above content is my long-term research effort. I hope you understand so that I have the motivation to make the next good videos. Today I will introduce the SPAD planes in World War I. The memoirs of Janusz Meissner, the famous Polish pilot and writer, contain the following lines. Some time ago the stench of castor oil began to drift through the air of the service hangar. This was where repairs were made to a French SPAD 7. Its 140 HP geared engine was lubricated by this rare substance, which made one think of a pharmacy. The aircraft was captured by the Austrians and was being restored to flying conditions in Polish workshops. After repairs, it was to be test flown by a pilot who had won the Iron Cross while serving with a German fighter squadron. Curious how the fates of men and machines interweave sometimes in most unusual way, the author of the passage was recalling an event that occurred at Luandauka Airfield in Lviv. The name SPAD was familiar to all pilots who participated in the Great War. It was closely related to the names of two distinguished aviation pioneers, Armand Depardussin and Louis Blériot. Armand Depardussin was fascinated with aviation. In 1911, in the town of Grinnell, he set up a company named Société des Aéroplanes Depardussin II. In 1912 the name changed to Société Provisorie des Aéroplanes Depardussin and the company moved to bois sur -Lain. With the help of talented engineer Louis Bechereau, hired by Armand Depardussin as technical director, the company produced a variety of successful aircraft designs. They were branded Depardussin. Becherot's design team included André Herbmont and a Dutchman, Frederick Koolhoven. In the summer of 1913, Armand Depardussin was arrested on charges of fraud and his company went bankrupt. In August 1914 the company's assets were bought up by Louis Charles Joseph Blériot, with Becherot and Herbmont as shareholders. The company was renamed Société pour l'Aviation et S's Derives and the acronym became the aircraft brand name. Louis Becherot's design In the early stage of the war, the main design effort focused on arming aircraft with a forward-firing machine gun. An alternative to a gun firing through the propeller disc was sought. One such solution was to mount the engine aft of the cockpit in a so-called pusher arrangement. Some pushers, like the French Farmans, Voisins, or the British Airco DH.2 saw combat. The SPAD company took a different approach to the problem. Designing a two-seat tractor biplane with the gunner, observer's nacelle mounted ahead of the propeller. Construction details of this configuration were patented as Brevet Invention No. 498.338 with a supplementary one-foot air edition number 22.088 to the original patent submitted on 7 June 1915. Thus the SPAD SA-1 was created, a biplane of wooden construction, powered by a 59 kW nine-cylinder, air-cooled La Rhone 9C rotary engine. The fuselage box was made of a wooden framework and had a rectangular cross-section. The fuselage upper decking was profiled to have a rounded shape. The front section of the fuselage, which included the pilot's cockpit, was covered with aluminum sheets and plywood, while the section aft of the pilot's cockpit was covered with fabric. The engine cowling was also made of aluminum sheets. The tailfin and tailplanes were tapered, in a fashion applied to later SPADs 3. The nacelle that housed the gunner, observer was of wooden construction. It was supported from below by wooden V-shaped struts and pivoted on lugs at the lower ends of the undercarriage legs. The wings were of wooden construction, with two rectangular spars and slightly rounded tips. Cutouts were provided in the central leading edge of the upper and lower wings to make room for the propeller blades while cutouts in the wing's trailing edge midsection offered the pilot better visibility over the top of the upper wing and below the aircraft. The wing bay construction used the company's patented brevet invention No. 488.191 dated 4 July 1915. 
it was designed to eliminate excessive vibration for in the wing bay bracing wires. It was discovered that vibrations were generated at the intersection points of the wires. Hence, a set of interplane struts was fitted. The struts being interconnected fore and aft at their midpoints. An additional benefit of this solution was that it further strengthened the wing bays. The ailerons were only attached to the upper wings and operated by a rod and bell crank system. Control rods ran from the base of the control column, through the lower wings to external bell cranks located at the base of the rear outboard interplane struts. The bell cranks were connected to vertical push rods, which ran along the rear interplane strut and linked to the actuating levers of the ailerons. The undercarriage comprised two main wheels and a tail skid. The SPAD A.1 made its maiden flight on 21 May 19,155. Its performance was notably better than contemporary pusher designs and the French Air Force duly placed an order for the aircraft. Serial production SPAD SA-1s featured additional, mesh-covered intakes, six being mounted on either side of the gunner, observer's nacelle, to provide cooling air for the engine. A new tubular mounting for a flexible machine gun was devised. The upper support struts were detachable allowing the nacelle to be lowered for engine maintenance. The observer was protected from the propeller, spinning right behind his back, by a wire mesh guard. A transparent panel on the floor of the observer's nacelle was provided. The tail fin was enlarged and tapered. A total of 11 SPAD A1s were manufactured for the Aviation Militaire 6. Serial production SPAD SA2s featured a reduced wingspan and wing area, as well as a redesigned engine cooling system with additional air intakes on either side of the fuselage. A shield to deflect exhaust fumes was also installed. Of the 99 aircraft produced, 42 were delivered to the French Air Force, while 57 were exported to Russia. The SPAD SA-4 was a development version of the SA-2 airframe coupled to a Lerone 9J rotary engine rated at 81 kW-7. Ten aircraft were sold to Russia. The SPAD SA-4 first flew in February 1916. The SPAD SA-3 was a dual-controlled version with a gun fitted to both cockpits. Interestingly, the two crew members could switch roles and hence increase the field of fire. Only one prototype of the SA-3 version, designated S-40, was built. The SPAD SA-5 was an SA-4 airframe powered by a 75 kW air-cooled, V-shaped Renault 8 engine. The SA-2 and A-4 versions were not popular with French airmen. Pilots claimed that they were difficult to handle, while the observers had serious doubts about the front nacelle they were supposed to fly in, especially the reliability of the hinged mounting points. The unsatisfactory layout of the SPAD SA-2 was best summarized by a British report dated early 1916. In this machine, the passenger is slung in a small fuselage in front of a tractor propeller. This arrangement is considered to be unnecessarily dangerous and the objects attained as regards the arc of fire do not justify it. All the SPAD machines are of similar type and are considered to be of no interest in their present form. The SPAD A2s and A4s were popular in Russia though, where they remained in active service until 1921. One Russian crew, Jew, A. Bratolobov and A.A. Kazakov, even scored an aerial victory in one of them. In early 1916 the SPAD SA-2 was used as the basis of an experimental single-seater design armed with one, or four, fixed machine guns mounted in a cupola. In April 1916 an official British aircraft review mentioned a single-seat SPAD armed with a single Hotchkiss Mitrelus Infanterie machine gun with a belt of 1,000 rounds mounted in a gondola in front of the propeller. This was the SPAD SG-2, a prototype fighter. It was lighter, had a smaller wingspan, and a wing area of about 18.4 square meters. At 2,000 meters it reached the speed of 161 kilometers per hour and climbed to that altitude in 7 minutes and 15 seconds. However, 
Early 1916 saw the rise of the German Fokker Eendecker armed with a synchronized machine gun, while the very maneuverable and fast Newport 11 C1, Bebe, reigned in the French Air Force. Compared with these, the SPAD SG-2 seemed a dead end in the evolution of combat aircraft designs. Louis Becherot strove to construct a similar aircraft, a single-seat fighter armed with a single machine gun firing through the propeller arc. Power was to be provided by a 96 kW rotary engine. Three variants 8, the SL and SK biplanes and the SJ monoplane, were envisaged, and respective prototypes were built, but none was flown. They all used a revolutionary method of constructing fuselages, first used in the Depardusson monocoque, a record-breaking racing aircraft, the light and strong, monocoque, fuselage. Still, it took more than a well-constructed airframe to make a successful aircraft design. What Louis Becherot needed was a new power plant for his aircraft. Swiss engineer Marc Burkite, who in 1904 was contracted by a Spanish automotive and engineering company Hispano Suiza 9, is credited with designing the first cast block engine. Instead of machining separate steel cylinders, Burkitt's design used cast aluminum blocks, into which thin steel liners were fitted. This made the engine more rugged and, at the same time, lighter. Burkitt's engine had eight cylinders in two banks of four, arranged at a 90 degrees angle in a V-type configuration. In 1914 he began to modify the engine for aircraft use. The new aero engine underwent trials in February 1915. It weighed 150 kilograms and delivered 103 kilowatts, 140 horsepower, at 1,400 revolutions per minute. Burkite also designed a synchronizer gear driven by the engine cam. In May 1915 the French military mission got interested in the new product of the Spanish company. Two sample engines were brought from Barcelona to France, and in July 1915 they were tested at Chalet Mudin. As a result of the tests, an order for 50 engines was placed in Spain and an offer was made to begin their production at the Hispano Suiza factory in Bois Colombes. The new engines also caught the attention of the British, who ordered them in August 1915. In autumn 1915 Louis Becherot, with only a mock-up of the Hispano Suiza V8 engine at hand, began to design his new fighter around it. It was to be a tractor biplane with its wing bay construction taken from the SPAD SA-2 and a wingspan of 7.62 meters. Initially, it received the company designation Biplane Shish 110. The wings had neither dihedral, sweep nor stagger. The ailerons were attached to the upper wing and were operated by the same system that had functioned successfully on the SPAD SA-2. The lower wing had a slightly reduced span. To improve visibility from the cockpit, the customary cutout was provided in the midsection of the upper wing, and parts of the lower wing at the trailing edge adjacent to the fuselage were also cut out similarly. The carefully streamlined fuselage front section housed the engine, mounted behind an octagonal radiator. The engine cylinder banks protruded out of the otherwise smooth outline of the fuselage and were covered with teardrop-shaped fairings. The biplane SH-1 featured a large conical spinner with a central opening to allow cooling air into the engine, and the radiator and its cowling were circular to blend with it. The control surfaces and the landing gear were also modeled after the SPAD SA-2. In April 1916, when a Hispano Suiza 8 aw engine rated at 111 kW was obtained, a prototype SPA. V was built and the first flown 11. It was armed with a single synchronized Vickers machine gun. The propeller spinner was discarded. Exhaust fumes were ejected from the engine cylinders via short exhaust stubs. During factory tests the SPA. V attained a top speed of 200 km per hour. Official trials, carried out in April and May at Villacoublay, proved the overall sturdiness of the construction which allowed diving speeds of up to 300 km per hour to be reached. 
Although the level flight speed and climb rate were inferior to those of the Newport XVIIC-1 or the German Halberstadt D-2, 268 aircraft were ordered to be built. The SFA-12 designated them SPA. VIIC-1. In case deliveries of Hispano Suiza engines failed, an alternative power plant was sought, and to this end, one SPAD was experimentally fitted with a Renault engine rated at 109 kilowatts. The engine was also a V8 but had its cylinder banks angled at 60 degrees. Its installation required considerable modification to the aircraft's nose and cowling. Serial production machines were slightly different from the prototype SPAD V14. Long exhaust pipes ran along either side of the fuselage and terminated just to the rear of the pilot's cockpit. By the end of September 1916, the SPAD company had delivered only 24 aircraft to the French Air Force. This delay was caused by the relatively small production capacity of the plant, as well as an inadequate supply of raw materials, an issue not taken into consideration when the order was placed. In August 1916, the first three SPAD S7 C1s were allotted to Lieutenant Armand Pinsard of Escadrille N26, Sergeant Paul Savage, and Lieutenant Georges Guinamer, the latter two of Escadrille N315. Problems continued with the delivery of radiators, which proved a major bottleneck during the production of SPADs. Initially, the radiators weren't even standardized. The plants producing them experienced shortages of raw materials, which hindered production and caused maintenance problems with the aircraft already in service. In March 1917 the radiator was finally standardized. The octagonal Bonfils at Laval radiator was chosen, having been found most resistant to engine vibration. In frontline service, the SPAD's cooling system demonstrated two major shortcomings. At high ambient temperatures, they quickly overheated. When subjected to low temperatures, they tended to get excessively cold. The overheating problem was tackled, in the field, by drilling extra cooling holes in the cowling and removing the engine side panels. The overcooling problem was, in turn, addressed by limiting the active surface of the radiators, with various solutions being tried. Eventually, Regulating the cooling airflow using radiator shutters proved to be the most efficient solution. After experimenting with many different arrangements, a set of seven vertical shutter bars became standard. In November 1916 the STAE-16 suggested that SPAD VII's wings should be modified by reducing their span and increasing their cord, to give a bigger wing area of 19 square meters. However, since the performance of the modified aircraft was only slightly improved 17, further tests were discontinued in December 1916. Another modification ordered by the STAE was a flatter wing, which used the standard geometry. The flat wing was tested in February 1917 but there are no indications that it ever made it to serial production. By March 1917 several modifications were introduced in response to an operational service experience. The most important was the replacement of the aluminum fuselage bracing components with steel alternatives, some strengthening of the engine bearers, and the internal strengthening of the fuselage framework using steel cables. In summer 1917 SPAD S7C1 was modified for the ground attack role. Some aircraft were fitted with racks for carrying 10 kg analyte bombs. The racks were mounted on the rear undercarriage legs. The SPAD S7. C1 powered by the Hispano Suiza 8A proved to be slower than its main adversaries, the German Albatrosses, and Fokkers. Hence, in the spring of 1917 Burkite modified the Hispano Suiza 8A engine increasing its compression ratio from 4.7, 1 to 5.3, 1. This increased power output to 133 kilowatts at 1,800 revolutions per minute. The upgraded engine was rushed into production under the designation, Hispano Suiza 8 AB. The increase in revolutions required a decrease in propeller pitch. 
by April 1917. The Hispano Suiza 8 AB had become the standard engine on all production SPAD VIIs. The first pilot to fly the re engine SPAD S7 C1 in combat was Georges Guinemer, who scored 19 aerial victories in it. The production of SPAD S7 C1s increased only slowly. Instead of the expected 800, only 268 examples were delivered to the French Air Force by 25 February 1917. Since it was planned to withdraw all the sesquiplane Newports from frontline units by the end of 1917, something had to be done about the poor production output of SPADs. They were in urgent demand not only by the French but also by other allies. There were two solutions. Expand the already existing factories and start license production. In France, several companies were contracted to produce SPADs. Blériot Aeronautique, Les Ateliers d'Aviation El Genor, Kellner et S's Fils, Construction Aeronautique Edmond de Marquet, Atelier de Construction d'Operales d'Aviation Roger Summer, Les Ateliers de Construction Régis Frères, Société d'Etudes Aeronautiques and Grammont. Abroad, license manufacture was started in Russia by the Dux Company in Moscow, and in Great Britain by Mann, Egerton Co. Limited from Norwich and L. Blerio Limited Brooklands. Modifications and improvements incorporated into the basic design during the subsequent production included enlarged ailerons and wing areas. Some SPAD VIIs were equipped with a photographic camera of 26 cm focal length for reconnaissance duties. The camera was mounted on the port side of the fuselage aft of the pilot's cockpit in a specially designed recess. It was accessible through a removable plywood panel. The Recce SPADs were marked with photo lettering on either side of their fuselages. Like Newports, SPAD VIIs were modified to combat enemy airships and observation balloons. For this purpose, they were armed with La Prière unguided rocket missiles fired from tubular launchers attached to the mid-bay struts. Metal sheathing was used to protect part of the lower wing area under the strut to prevent damage from the rocket exhaust gases. SPADs produced in Great Britain were slightly different from their counterparts manufactured in France. Noteworthy differences included the installation of unlouvered engine cowling panels and a hood-like fairing over the breech of the Vickers machine gun in front of the pilot's cockpit. The bulky windscreen is expected to make it easier for pilots to handle traffic jams, as it is used as a windshield. However, the threader is not transparent and greatly reduces the pilot's forward visibility, so it is often left out. The Adelstone factory attempted to rebuild SPAD with a 147 kW Hispano Suiza engine and augment her ship's armament by adding twin machine guns. Pilots who have flown the SPAD S7. C-1 in combat generally rate this as a good aircraft, very solid, with good maneuverability, but with the disadvantage of weak armament. In the summer of 1916, a machine gun was a serious drawback. Two machine guns, which at the time were becoming standard on German fighters, provided significantly more firepower. Subsequent tests were abandoned in June 1917 probably largely because the SPAD S-13 C-1 was put into service. Many aspects have contributed to this situation, mainly related to the manufacturing technology and materials used. For example, SPADs by Mann, Egerton Co. Limited produce 20 km per hour slower French SPAD. Another British initiative was to pair the SPAD S-7 with a 147 kW Wolseley Viper engine. Overall, the performance of the British-built SPADs was said to be inferior to that of the French-built planes. The British mounted a Lewis machine gun on top of the upper wing of their SPADs firing in a propeller arc. This modification increased firepower but increased drag. With problems soon resolved and production shared among several manufacturers, SPAD 7 finally began to appear in large numbers as early as 1917. By mid-1917, about 500 SPADs were available. Available, was served on the front lines, almost completely replacing Newport. 
Spad is a solid performer in combat and can take down most of his opponents. It is also famous for being able to absorb more damage than its more fragile predecessors. Total SPAD 7 production is estimated at 3,820 units, including about 3,500 built in France, 220 in the UK, and another 100 in Russia. On the other hand, quite a few pilots found the SPAD lacking in maneuverability and some even switched to the nimble Newports they were used to while waiting for the aircraft to become more reliable, but most were quick. Realize its combat potential. René Fonck, the the King of France during World War I with 75 victories, said of the birth of SPAD that it completely changed the landscape of air warfare. New tactics have been developed that take advantage of the SPAD's speed and compensate for its lack of mobility. The SPAD's ability to safely dive up to 400 km per hour is a major advantage that allows it to quickly leave the battle without fear of being pursued if the situation calls for it. Most of the American pilots then ended up traveling abroad behind the cane of SPAD S-13. S. VII's initial reach was so great that it has continued to work with airborne particles around the globe, from Europe to Russia from the Far East to the Americas. It was also used as a standard pilot certificate test aircraft until 1928. Other countries used SPAD, and several new states were established after the war, including Great Britain, the United States, Russia, Ukraine, Serbia, Italy, Greece, Portugal, Poland, and Czechoslovakia. Ultimately, the SPAD S7 design proved very successful during its service and was the first choice of several notable wartime enemies including Georges Guinemer of France and Eddie Rickenbacker of France. France. Americas. The S7 paved the way for the similar S13 among other developments released by SPAD and was also the first fighter for many newly minted American volunteer pilots serving in France along with Lafayette Escadrille about 189 SPAD S7 in American hands. I would like to end my video here. The video is based on research and references a variety of sources. Sometimes there are sources or their subjective assessment is not standard. So in the video, there will be parts that are not accurate compared to reality. So if you are a person who knows a lot about it, you can comment below so I can understand more about it. Hope you can understand and help me. I will try to improve in the next videos. As always, if you like this video, hit the like button to support us. Subscribe and hit the notification bell if you want to be one of the first to know more about our videos. And now is the time to hear from you. From you. From you. From you.